I didn't own any Nintendo home consoles as a kid. I did have a Game Boy and so on, but for home consoles I started with the Sega Mega Drive, then to the PlayStation. I was 15 the first time I played an N64, which my brother bought, and the only rare games I played were Donkey Kong Country 3 on the Game Boy and Perfect Dark. I really don't have the nostalgia for the company a lot of people do. I think Banjo-Kazooie is a less good Mario 64 clone, as is Donkey Kong 64. Conker's Bad Fur Day was funny when I was 17, but replaying it, it's just pure hell nonsense. I don't particularly like the Donkey Kong Country games, finding them slow compared to Mario and Sonic. I do like Perfect Dark, I think it's great, but altogether, looking at the company before they were purchased by Microsoft, there's only one game I like, and after they were purchased, they really didn't make anything good. Grab by the Ghoulies, Perfect Dark Zero, Cameo Elements of Power, Banjo, Nuts and Bolt are all pretty mediocre to bad games. Killer Instinct is maybe good, but I only really like anime fighters. But there is one game they made that stands out as one of my favourites of all time, Viva Piñata. It's party time! Viva Piñata! Viva Piñata is Rare's first series released after their acquisition by Microsoft. It consists of four games released between 2006 and 2008, and a four kids cartoon series. The game is an animal, rearing, and gardening sim, with the focus being on attracting cute piñatas to a garden, breeding them, feeding them to other piñatas, and ultimately raising them to be shipped to a party so some kids can beat them to death with sticks. Don't worry, they get stuck back together and sent home once they're done. The series is pretty unique in its way, with the games it probably most closely resembles being Animal Crossing or Harvest Moon. It is a mostly relaxing farming sim, though there are some things that can upset the balance of your garden. Weeds, evil piñata that can poison those resident ones, and random dudes who will just come into the garden to smash the shit out of stuff. The game, I think, suffers from an identity crisis. The game is clearly marketed toward kids with its own animated series, and the opening cinematic portraying this ridiculous adventure with sentient piñatas having parties and getting into all manner of trouble. But the gameplay is not reflective of that at all. I can imagine an eight-year-old kid watching this cartoon and the opening cinematic expecting a cute adventure with piñata, only to start the game and be told his first objective is to smash garbage with a spade. It also has the problem of putting off older players, I remember getting the game secondhand when I was 17, at the recommendation of someone from school. I thought they were just messing around, because I'd seen the TV show and channel surfing, but they seemed serious. So I got it, put it in, watched the opening, and was convinced he'd been having me on. But then I got to the actual game and loved it. I've seen it for other people too. I talk about how much I wish Rare would make Viva Pinata 3, and people who only know the series in passing think I'm joking. The game being an Xbox exclusive may also have been harmful. The game came out at a time when every game was gritty or shooty on a console best known for its shooters, Gears of War, Call of Duty, and Halo. A cutesy gardening simulator wasn't exactly appealing to the core audience the 360 was marketed to. Anyway, let's look at the games. As I said before, Viva Piñata is a gardening and animal raising sim. The game starts with you receiving a plot of land covered in trash, and being asked by a woman named Leafus to get it back into shape. She gives you a shovel, and you start your epic adventure by smashing some trash and beating some dirt. Remember, you can hold down the button to repeatedly whack the floor. I didn't know this the first time I played. After about 10 minutes of whacking, the ground should be nice and soft, and your first piñata will show up. A worm. All piñata names are some kind of play on words between the animal it is and the type of candy. If you have enough soft soil in your garden, it will become a resident. This is the first stage of piñata raising. Every piñata has a number of requirements. To appear, to visit, to become a resident, and to breed. These obviously get harder and require more efforts to meet as the game progresses. Once you have two worms, you'll be introduced to the builder, who will build them a house for you. A house is a requirement for piñatas to breed. Because they ain't degen to do it anywhere. 
Once the romance requirements are met, you can lead the two piñatas together and they will begin the romance minigame, where you must lead one piñata to the other through a maze of bombs. You know, like breeding in real life. Once done, the piñatas will go into the house and romance and you get a watch. All the piñatas have unique romance dances that you get to see once you've completed their minigame. From the cute to the stupid to the utterly bizarre Once you have some worms, your next piñata should come. Sparrowmint. In the first game, these will become residents if some worms have romanced in the garden, which makes them voyeurs, I guess. And so, the game continues. To breed sparrowmints, you need a house for them, and you feed them worms. Early on in the game, mechanics will be introduced slowly, but you will be meeting the appearance requirements for new piñata pretty frequently, so it can get a little overwhelming pretty quick. Things also have a tendency to snowball out of control, especially early on. Marshmallows and bunnycomb piñatas are relatively early visitors and only require eating a few turnips or carrots to become resident. But don't even bother doing anything or naming them because every single time they will be eaten by their respective predator, serpents or pretztails, so until you have two of each of them, don't even bother. You can only get two of each piñata by having them meet the residence requirement. To get more, you need to romance them. The main aim of the game, I guess, would be to get all the piñatas and make them as valuable as possible. A piñata's value is determined by its age and a number of other factors. Feeding piñatas certain things will turn them into colour variants. Some of these have more value, some have less. And meeting certain requirements allows you to breed wildcard piñata that have some slight variants to the model. These are much higher value, but very hard to get. There are other ways to get some piñatas. By meeting certain requirements, you can transform some piñata into others, such as by setting this taffoy on fire and putting it with a watering can, it turns into a red heart. The game is all about messing around and exploring, trying different things to get more piñatas. Though the game will straight up tell you how to meet some requirements, others, such as how to evolve the piñata, can only be found by listening to NPC dialogue and figuring it out. There is a town of NPCs who act as your services. The builder, shopkeeper, tinkerer who changes some items into others, and a doctor who will heal any sick piñata. The inn, where you can hire helpers to gather and sell crops for you. There is an overarching story through the game about Leafa's family that provides some lore, but in the end the game is just a fun time gardening sim. The other main focus of the game would be to cure all the evil piñatas and stop the ruffians from breaking your shit. Evil piñatas come into the garden and will poison and scare your residents. Ruffians will come and break down fences and things. Professor Pester, who will come and smash your most expensive piñata unless bribed not to. And you have Destardos, who will occasionally come to the garden and to smash a sick piñata. There are some simple ways to deal with most of these. Once an evil piñata is cured, no more will show up, only its good counterpart will appear from then on. Curing an evil piñata is the same as getting a normal piñata to become a resident, it just has to eat something or meet some requirement. The game isn't flawless by any means, there are a lot of annoyances. Getting piñata to do what you want can be a massive pain, they will often not go where they are told, or something will get in their way. One of the biggest annoyances I had was piñatas going into their house whilst I was trying to get them to romance, and once I get them to come out, the other one goes in. It's just irritating. Also, if you have an object you want tinkered with, like say, a pumpkin, you need to call the tinkerer to come. But whilst he's on his way, some goddamn wild piñata can come and eat the pumpkin you just spent 300 chocolate coins on, then leave your garden just to piss you off. Something else that can happen is a piñata can meet the residence requirements, but deciding just to leave and not become resident, because one of the requirements for it visiting the garden are no longer met. This can be especially frustrating for later piñata that have difficult to fulfill residence requirements. So, that's a brief rundown of the game. 
The TV show existed to help kids playing the game figure out some of the requirements in-game for say turning one piñata into another, or what things a piñata might need to become resident. But as I said before, the show has a wildly different tone from the game itself, and its incredible childishness is most likely off-putting to older people who might be interested in the game and missed out as a result. The TV show also spawned a party game, Viva Piñata Party Animals, which by all accounts was bad. The original game, however, did relatively well, selling around 1.5 million copies worldwide, which was enough to prompt them to make a sequel. Trouble in Paradise was released in 2008, alongside Pocket Paradise on the Nintendo DS. Trouble in Paradise improves a lot of the flaws of the original game. For example, getting valuable wildcard piñatas are much easier. All you need to do is complete the romancing minigame when seven piñatas that species already exist, and get all the heart tokens in the maze. The game also adds some new things, such as special arctic and desert zones you can visit to catch piñatas unique to those areas. However, given its rush development time, the game feels much more like a DLC than a true sequel. There are some changes here and there, such as different residence requirements, but all the romance dances for the original piñatas are the same. The game only adds about 30 new piñata, and nothing really new has been added in terms of challenge. The antagonists are the same, and the goals are the same. Pocket Paradise was an attempt to bring the game to DS. It has all the same mechanics, though a lot of things are scaled back. Piñata only have one variant instead of three. The game features an overhead camera rather than the free movement camera of the original and tries to tie itself more with the cartoon providing special training episodes featuring characters from the cartoon. Unfortunately, both games sold pretty poorly. Pocket Paradise sold around half a million, and Trouble in Paradise 400,000 copies. This puts an end to the franchise. After Viva Piñata and Nuts and Bolts proved to be commercial failures, despite in the former case very good reviews, Microsoft restructured the company and had them make nothing but Kinect games for the next 10 years. A number of people at Rare who worked on Viva Piñata, as well as Banjo and a number of their other iconic games left to form Playtonic Studios and make the mixed-reviewed ukulele. I think the failure of these games is a massive shame, and every year at E3 I hope to be surprised by a Viva Piñata 3 announcement. As much as I am not nostalgic for Rare, I think it's a shame what ended up happening to the company, with layoffs following the critical and commercial failure of the Kinect games they were involved in. They are now making Sea of Thieves, which, whilst many people seem to like it, ultimately looks dull and repetitive to me. But I do think it's hope that the company has returned to make proper games and not Novelty Connect rubbish. In 2015, the company released Rare Replay, which features both of the Viva Piñata 360 games. I encourage anyone with an Xbox One to pick it up and play them. They are fantastic. And, with the Xbox Live Games Pass for PC, my biggest hope is that Rare Replay will eventually be ported to PC and allow a whole new audience of people to experience these silly cutesy games about raising piñata. And maybe, one day, we'll get Viva Piñata 3. But we all know we'll get Banjo 3 first. Thank you for watching! This was my first video, like, ever edited or made at all. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, you know, uh, if you liked it, please like, comment. I have some links to Patreon and Twitch if you want to follow me there. Um, and thank you for watching!